Hello friends. This truck, man, I love this truck. I haven't seen this truck in a while. We found this truck in 1999, I think it was, and built it for a client. A uh, really cool guy, I still remember him really well. I hoarded it for a little while and then we delivered it, I believe it was in right around 2002. Um, the truck has stayed in California, in fact, its whole life since day one. Um, it's a 1967. And the, the idea here was that I wanted to restore it visually to look very proper, original stock, but it is a resto mod, so I corrupted it. So forgive me, it actually drives worth the damn now and can go on the freeway and stop when you hit that pedal and accelerate when you hit the other pedal. Just a few novel concepts like that. Um, so basically, uh, visually very stock, although I did integrate uh, Brazilian Bandeirante doors that uh, were brand new, new old stock in 2000. I imported personally from Brazil. So they're identical to the U.S. spec uh, 1980, August of 1980 to 83 FJ40 doors, although they do feature the really cool non-USA wing windows, which I don't know, I really dig. Other than that, the color is not correct. It's actually a vintage Maserati, Maserati Ghibli color. Personally, like my favorite white, I've used this color on a couple Icon projects and TLC projects over the years, including that D200 Dodge we did. It was a full body off resto. Uh, we have all the original build photos uh, in my archive. Um, some of them you'll see as we go through this video. Started as an original paint truck, went all the way down and all the way back up again. Uh, when we saw this body in bare metal, it was phenomenal. And that's really rare with an FJ45. Usually 45 bodies, I mean, they were work trucks. They got their asses kicked, so they're really hammered. But this body was stellar, man. When it came back from getting the media blast, we were just blown away how clean it is. So other than the door modifications and therefore the rear view mirror, visually the rest of the truck is very authentic and true to the year. You will notice on the dash we added this hang down center console, which is fabricated in steel. And then that houses the head unit and the controls for the modern AC and heat. Um, steering wheel was restored. Couple minor hairline cracks developing on it now, but I wouldn't screw with it. Original horn button, original gauges, uh, blah, blah, blah. Mechanically, it's been fairly revolutionized. It's running a GM 5.7 cast iron V8 called a Ramjet. So that's fuel injected, 350 horse, 400 torque. Great bulletproof, stupid, simple injected motor. Then we're running the Toyota H55F, my favorite Toyota factory five speed found in the late model Land Cruisers. And then obviously a 19 spline transfer case that's made it to that. Updated late model drive shafts, disc brake, front axle, um, power steering, old man emu suspension. I mean, it's just really set up nice. It's, it's gonna be way more versatile uh, and more fun to drive than the stock ones are. I mean, don't get me wrong, a dead stock one is super cool, but I mean, they're just archaic. You know, they got a one barrel inline F motor, three on the tree, non-synchro gears, non-helicut gears in the T case. So, you know, at 60 miles an hour, the truck's screaming for you to just pull over and give it a darn break. So all the mods that we did on this, we're all about drivability, not turning it into some silly off-road monster or anything stupid, but, but just refinement, daily driver friendliness, noise levels coming down, efficiency going up, weight coming down. And you know, although we did this truck almost 14 years ago, it's in great shape. It, it's got about 22, I know about 20,000 miles on the restoration. And um, it's just been cared for. It's never been abused uh, since we did the work. And it's just been loved by both the owners. The guy that we originally built it for, he, I think he moved or something happened. Uh, we're still friends with him. His name's Austin. But anyway, he sold it uh, through me and we sold it to another guy. That guy then found out about Icon and ordered an Icon MJ45 pickup. If you remember the one I called the Stormtrooper, it was like black and white, 
the only FJ45 icon we've done with gloss paint. That's the truck he recently took delivery of. Once he got that truck, he's like, I love the stock long bed, but I don't need it. This 45 icons does everything I need it to do. So he actually had two FJ45s. We built him, well, we didn't build either for him. They were both previously done, but he owned this 45 resto mod and then a gray blue 45 long bed removable top that uh, he's also sent back and currently we're servicing that getting ready to resell it as well. It's another TLC stage, I think it was, that one was a stage two resto that we did. I don't even remember, we'll worry about that when we shoot that video and I do my due diligent research. All right, for those of you that are not intimate with the FJ45s, uh, here's kind of a brief rundown. So. For the U.S. market, they were only available from 1963 till 1967. They were brought here in three different configurations, excluding the FJ45 LV wagon. You had the short bed with a fixed cabin. You had the long bed with the removable cab. And then you have the short bed with the removable cab. Traditionally, this version, the long bed with the removable hardtop, has been the most sought after. The short bed with the fixed cap is the tiniest cabin you can imagine. It's like a Kiki car. It's factored for like a Japanese fisherman who never sat up straight. It's a train wreck for most Americans to fit in. The long bed, it's still kind of a tight cabin, but with a removable hardtop on the short bed or long bed, there is a fair amount of room. It's totally manageable. If you're a bigger guy, then I'd recommend you have me modify this truck with an I did it tilt GM style steering column, which will then give you a little bit more ergonomic freedom to clear long legs. But um, the tops come off super quick and easy. Um, it's actually a blast with the pickup. This truck also has this super rare, what they call the headache rack. I have no idea where that name came from, but basically it's that rack structure behind me. To call it a roll bar would be a bit of an exaggeration, but I think its original design intent was to like catch stuff from hitting the back window on the cab, and give you kind of tie down tether points. But generally they always got removed, so they're stupid rare. They're really, really, really hard to find. And this truck, this one is original, been with the truck since day one, so it's kind of cool. So the restoration has really held up nicely on this truck. Um, there's some things on this truck that we did that can no longer be done. Um, a lot of the weather stripping and small OEM restoration parts done 10 plus years ago when we built it are actually no longer available by Toyota and in some cases not in the aftermarket. One thing in particular would be these wheels. Uh, these are really stupid rare. These are factory original hubcaps that are unique to 19, I believe 67 and older only, and you never see them. Um, I've in fact only, I've owned a thousand plus FJs and I think I've only ever seen three or four trucks with them. So when we found this truck, the fact that it had the caps, albeit beat to hell, really inspired us. So I had a excellent stainless steel panel beater expert guy um, file them and heat them and shrink them and clean them and stretch them and polish them and he restored them really to absolute perfection and uh, I think it's a really really cool detail same with the tail lights the tail lights on this truck uh, are factory original single color which are extremely rare in fact I think they are pre DOT but we thought they were kind of groovy. Same with the hood spear. That's been restored to perfection, and that's an original part. We did upgrade the windshield frame hooks and hood hooks to the stainless steel variant just because they looked a hell of a lot better. And the cowl vent on these earlier models is really cool, or rather the windshield vent. The cowl vents leaked like hell, but the windshield vents are pretty cool. So this crank, you simply crank it out, and then it rotates that front panel, and there's little screens there to keep the bugs out of your teeth. All the emblems are the correct ones early for the year. Because it has a modern stereo, we did use a modern but still OEM Toyota FJ40 app. 
antenna, gas cap, dead nuts, NOS, running boards of the factory two-piece. We polyurea coated the inserts because it lasts better. Interior seating's all stock. We did it in marine rated vinyl. Factory stock, by the way, would have been a pumpkin orange, and the client didn't like that. So we powder coated all the frames, replated all the hardware, redid all the foam and spring work, and then the vinyl choice was done to match the door panels from the later doors. Correct waffle style headliner, and that is correct for this vintage. Original dome light, quite rare. New old stock sun visors, again, quite rare. When these doors were new, the glass, the latches, the locks, the pull handle, the door panel were all OEM. Those are new old stock factory windshield wiper motors, now totally made out of unobtainium, but super killer. A couple minor scratches here on one of the defroster vents, here on the driver's door edge, another one up front on the cowl, and then one more right by that uh, gas door. But really those, and I'm pretty picky, I suppose you guys know, that's all I see. Uh, the paint shop's held up just wonderfully. So I appreciate you as always taking the time to watch my long shaky videos. Any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. TLC4x4.com or 818-280-3330.